the report that we were discussing before the break uh, on the use of incendiary uh, weapons also takes a job at the Russian media for reporting um, that white phosphorus might have been used. And that conclusion was uh, reached based on some eyewitness reports, uh, video reports coming from the scene, reports that show you know, white smoke on some glittering particles in the skies. And we, all, we can also see people commenting, people on the ground commenting that it may, it may be a white phosphorus. Now, as far as I understand uh, uh, the investigation that was, uh, those are, by the way, some of those reports. As far as I understand, the investigation uh, showed later on that uh, white phosphorus uh, wasn't used, but, uh, you know, those are still incendiary weapons, you know, yeah. those are still harmful weapons that you actually are against, but... Uh, yeah, no, that's great. In other words, I mean, white phosphorus is, um, it's a particular kind of weapon. Um, it, it, it basically, you know, if used properly, creates smoke that can hide forces. If used improperly, it burns civilians. This is what we saw, for example, when Israel used white phosphorus in Gaza. In U eastern Ukraine, we have no evidence that white phosphorus was used. We do have evidence that other incendiary devices were used. But absolutely, and uh, what you actually suggest in your report, um, that the incident of the Russian media reporting on the alleged use of white phosphorus was uh, the example, uh, and I'm, I'm quoting you here, uh, that the Kremlin's, of the Kremlin's determination to discredit the Ukrainian government at all Cost. Can you elaborate? How did you uh, go from, you know, just Russian media showing those uh, reports to the Kremlin's determination? I mean, that seems to be like a very, very broad stroke. Well, you know, I think we have been um, frustrated by the very selective use of Human Rights Watch's reporting in the Russian media. Um, so, for example, when Human Rights Watch issued a report criticizing the Ukrainian government for the use of cluster munitions, Everybody cited it in the Russian press. Um, Russian that officials adds cited credi it. Credibility right. to Human Rights Watch. We, we put out, I think we've put out 23 reports on abuses by the separatists, and I don't think any of them got much play in the Russian media. So, so you know, our, our interest, um, you know, as I say, we don't take sides. We condemn abuses by both sides. There are plenty of abuses by both sides to condemn. What we would hope for is that the Russian media would look fairly at both sides and not simply cherry pick and when there's something bad said about well, Ukrainian but, forces, highlight that. But Mr. Roff, uh, uh, you are a very experienced mm -hmm. communicator and I, I'm sure you understand that this is a political statement. It's a political judgment about the Kremlin's determination and that would be okay uh, for uh, a think tank. But I think Human Rights Watch prides itself on being uh, a non-political organization. So when you go from the use of incendiary weapons to, um, you know, the Kremlin's media strategy, I think that, you know, certainly uh, looks like you're politicizing the very, very important job that your people are doing on the ground. Mm -hmm.